Okay, so now on to the presentation part. As I mentioned, we're very fortunate to have uh, Ron come and speak on behalf of Nanasonics. Nanasonics is a really is quite a, a quite a good Australian success story. I'm I'm going to let Ron sort of talk about talk about the company, but from a from a medical device company has now got GE as one of their cornerstone investors. I think it's a fantastic success story. So please welcome Ron to the stage. Um, I'm a little shorter than Steve, so bear with me, please. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank Steve and the team for inviting me and uh, especially Nanasonics to be able to present to you today. Um, Nanasonics uh, is uh, what you could call a biotech and biomed company, but essentially our focus has been on delivering point-of-care disinfection solutions to customers and particularly focused on unmet needs. And as we'll see in a few slides, you'll be able to see that there is in fact quite a demand for uh, infection control solutions at the point of care. Nanasonic's philosophy has been about providing uh, disinfection solutions where 80% of the market opportunity is. Um, the reality today is that sterilisation and disinfection occur in central sterilisation departments within hospitals. And in fact all the big players like the Johnson and Johnsons and the 3Ms invest heavily in these central st sterilisation departments. In fact, 80% of the investment is there, but the reality is that 80% of disinfection today occurs in private point-of-care clinics. And the reason is, is that as technology is becoming more and more sophisticated and non-invasive uh, methodologies are being applied, disinfecting these technologies and these devices requires more sophisticated uh, solutions for disinfection. So why consider Nanasonics? Well, first of all, we're a validated opportunity. We have a strong intellectual property portfolio. We've taken that IP, we've translated, translated that to a manufacturing business, and uh, we've actually taken our first product, which is an ultrasound disinfector, uh, into the marketplace and have uh, uh, a strong market opportunity. Uh, we have, it's written here as a best-in-class product, but you'll see today that we are the only product in our class today. There is no competitor for our product. This gives a very powerful and significant advantage to us uh, as we move forward. We've had very strong revenue growth, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. We have a very strong uh, capital base. We did a capital raising not so long ago, and we're well cashed up to uh, take our plans into the future. And, of course, as Steve pointed out, we have not only uh, an exclusive distributorship with GE Healthcare in North America, but they've made a strategic investment in our business. Uh, we've worked very hard to develop a strong and high calibre management team, some of which are ex-ResMed, heads of manufacturing and the like. So we have many drivers that allow us to actually capitalise on our early opportunity, including very strong regulatory and economic drivers for our product in the marketplace today. So if you're going to go into radiology practice today, you're going to see millions of dollars worth of equipment, MRIs, CT scanners, $200,000 ultrasound machines. And yet today, the reality is, is that disinfection of intravaginal, intrarectal ultrasound transducers, which go into the body, are extremely primitive, almost prehistoric. What are people doing today? Today, people are disinfecting with toxic solutions called aldehydes. In fact, there's a screenshot there you can see of a, a door in uh, the VA hospital in New York in North America, uh, which shows that the chemistries that are used to disinfect are toxic, biohazarded irritants and carcinogenic. Our um, focus has been to provide a solution that eliminates all of those issues for the end user and the patient. Um, wipes are some of the things that people do, but ultimately what we have designed is a point of care fully automated reprocessor for these ultrasound transducers that require high level disinfection. And for those of you, we'll just call it sterilization at the moment to make it a bit simpler. So this is the product that we've actually designed. It's about the size of a, a microwave on its side. It weighs about 15 kilos, it's fully portable, usually sits on a wall. You can see the ultrasound transducer uh, placed on the inside. There is a cartridge which is the heart of the consumable revenue model. Uh, we run like a printer cartridge business model which we'll talk about in a minute. 
uh, which goes into the little black compartment on the side. It takes 80 mils and delivers 1.5 mils into the chamber for full disinfection. And if you consider how significant that is, 1.5 mils will do what maybe two or five litres did before. That's a, a big improvement as to uh, what we're doing. Uh, essentially, there's a little chemical indicator, but the upside of it is the transducers inside, close the door, press the button, seven minutes. It's fully automated. At no point does the operator have to come in contact with toxic chemistries. The byproducts are water and oxygen. You do not have to deal with uh, environmental wastage, which is the, the, the main pro one of the main problems of the aldehydes, which are so toxic. Just to give you an idea of uh, what the, the market potential is, if we were to put one ultrasound trans, one of our products with every ultrasound transducer that is out there today, it's a $1.8 billion opportunity in a rapidly growing market of about 8% per annum. Uh, we believe that the opportunity really lies in the early stages in that 40% of the marketplace where high level disinfection occurs, which is primarily women's health. And we believe that that's about a $350 to $700 million opportunity. So what's driving the, the uptake of our product? Well, we talked about regulatory drivers. There's health economic changes that are occurring in North America and around the world. The Obama health care reforms have put pressure back onto the end user to uh, improve infection control procedures because if people get cross-infection or an infection in a hospital, the clinic where it originated must pay for those costs. That's a very strong economic driver for our business and for our value proposition. Our customers are saying, and we've had this independently validated by some of the largest healthcare purchasing networks in, in the United States, efficiency and time and labour saving are fundamental. By not having to take your ultrasound transducer, go into a toxic facility 20 or 30 metres away from where the patient is, you actually dramatically save your labour times and cost, so much so that in some cases you actually remove the number of heads you have in that ultrasound and radiology facility. This can be hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings per annum. We're interested in owning the entire ultrasound reprocessing value chain and we have a range of, of products that we're making available to customers as part of this focus. But one of the things that we've really focused on, our product actually has a computer. All the logs, all the data that has actually occurred as a result of the procedures that have gone through the machine can be downloaded onto hospital records or onto a printer that can go on the patient record. Today, everything is manual. This is fully automated. It eliminates error and from a risk mitigation perspective and liability and risk issue in the United States, this is a dramatic improvement to what people are doing today. If for a moment we're just to imagine, this is, goes to the heart of what our business model is, but you're looking at saturation uh, of the marketplace, essentially the capital equipment item, which is the, the, the Trofon product which you saw before, will account for approximately 36% of the re revenue. And you can see that the consumable cartridge, which is the printer cartridge model we were talking about, is in fact the heart of the opportunity here and will account for about 52% of the revenue. This just shows some of the financial metrics, but the heart of this is to say uh, that we have uh, gone from a $2.3 million revenue in 2011 financial year to 12.3, and we believe will be profitable in the not too distant future. Uh, we have a distributor model at the moment, but we're also going direct to, to, to uh, market in some regions, particularly in Europe. Uh, as we mentioned, GE is our distributor in North America and a very strong partner for us. This gives you an indication of the rate of change within a year of releasing our product. There's been dramatic changes in the uptake of our product in North America. It's accelerating dramatically, and we've had quarter on quarter revenue growth all the way through financial year 2012. These are some of the luminary facilities that have our, have, have our uh, uh, equipment. You can see some of these are part of the ha Harvard Medical School Program, Massachusetts General. Uh, Brigham and Women's, these are household names in women's health around the world and that gives you an indication as to the number of units that they've purchased. Massachusetts General just last week purchased another six more units. GE made a strategic investment in our business. We were certified through the Healthy Imagination Program. It provides significant validation for the value that they perceive in our product and they are looking to us as being the leading edge of an infection control portfolio Believe it or not, GE Healthcare doesn't have an infection control portfolio in their healthcare system and network. Where are we going? Well, 
we are going to strongly leverage the, leverage the opportunities we have in Australia and New Zealand. Today we have more than 700 of these units here in Australia. If you go to Women's Health Clinic, you might see our product there. Please keep an eye out for it, those of you who go to women's health clinics, about 50% of this audience. Uh, we're building on the early momentum that we have in Hong Kong, uh, and we've had strong engagement with a key opinion leader program. We're looking to identify new product opportunities. We're in strong discussions or detailed discussions with trade partners, and we are going to be rolling out a new platform of technologies in the next uh, couple of years. So. Thank you very much, uh, Steve and the team, um, and uh, I appreciate uh, your invitation and the opportunity to speak. Thank you.